Them. Come on, guys. Do you want to get up? Do you want to just stand up, kids? Let me just get someone to pray over them, please. Father, we just release a blessing over these children. Lord, it is our desire to see your presence grow inside of them. And that an intimacy between you and them will form above everything else that, that is in their lives, Lord. We pray that your power will rest upon them so that they can have an intimate relationship with you where they will choose you, Father, above all else. Bless them today, Father, as they are together. And let their intimacy with you keep growing. In Jesus' name. Okay, guys, all our kids are going to the lounge now.
So Zan is going to put something on for you there. Please, no one upstairs. Don't want to unleash the beast that is Luna. She's not the beast. That's rude. Guys, we can stand if you want to stand. We have a bit more space now. If we're going to continue to worship Jesus. Just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind. I know there is peace in your presence. I speak Oh, my God. 
in us, Lord, and around us. Will you break strongholds? You are the master of the breakthrough, God, like a rushing water. You are the master of the breakthrough. Father, we pray that over our, ourselves, Father. Bring breakthrough. Pray over our city, God, here in Cardiff. Bring breakthrough like a rushing water in Jesus' name. Pray over this nation, God of Wales. Will you bring breakthrough like a rushing water? Father, will this be a land of salvation again? A land of deliverance and healing, Father. Will you move by your Spirit, God?
presence in our lives. God, we gather to glorify you. We gather to lift your name up, to declare that your name is above every name. It's why we, it's why we do what we do. Lord, you've changed us. You've, you've given us, you've taken the old and you've made it new. Behold, I make all things new. Your mercies are new every morning. Today, your mercies are new for us. We know your goodness, God. We know your grace. We know your greatness. God, as we, as we set our eyes on you, as we behold you today, will every other thing, every other challenge, and every other trouble and, and affliction, Father, just fall away and fade away. Truly, if God is for us, who can be against us? Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So, Father, we take heart, we take courage, we have hope today because we know you are with us and you are for us, God. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence, God. Amen. 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 Come on, Is it too hot in here? Are we okay? Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, you can put the guitar down here if you want to the front. I don't think Morgan's going to pace too much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, do you want it now or look up your phone? Hey, guys, it's my privilege to, uh, to ask Morgan, or to introduce Morgan. I think we've all met Morgan, but it's preaching the word today. And I like to say this because it's true. I like to say most things because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that, uh, that Morgan and his wife Kim and their family moved to Carter five years ago is such a big part of why we moved here. Uh, 
um, and God used them as an instrument to draw us here to this land and to this city. Um, and so there's much to honor in this man and in this family. And so we're so thankful for you guys. And uh, we pray God's blessing over you. You're anointed to preach the word Amen. for us today. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give Morgan a hand. <laughs> I asked Ezra to bring this along because I, I am going to be quite scripted. I haven't spoken, preached, taught, whatever you want to call it, in many, many years. So you're going to have to bear with me. I'm going to be a bit scripted, but if that's okay. Um, thank you for that worship. That was, that was really great. I think that worship today is really the book of Hebrews sung. And I'll tell you why I think that. Um, but let me go on to tell you why and what I'd like to do today in, in, in sharing with you. I'd like to exhort you. Um, and that's a fancy word, and we hear it a lot, exhortation, but, but what does it mean? And I thought to quickly look into that, and here's a quick definition. Ever heard the word parakletos? Mm -hmm. right? The Holy Spirit mm -hmm. with us? This is a word called paraklesis, um, and it means an urging done by someone close to you. And really the purpose of today's message to you is to admonish you, to encourage you, to, to bless you. Um, you know, that's everything Eddie sung today that everyone sung, um, I'm, I'm blessed because it speaks so much of what we're going to cover today. And um, you might ask, well, how are you going to do that? Well, I'm glad you did. <laughs> I would like to tell you a quick little story, and it's a historical story, it's a fact, it's true, um, his, it's historically true. About 1,950 years ago, um, the collective health and personal spiritual well-being of a group of believers was in desperate trouble. They were new Jewish converts, and they were experiencing some pretty hard, pretty hard times. Confiscation of property... They were being persecuted, ridiculed, kicked out of you know, their areas, their homes. Um, and times were tough. Times were really tough for these people. And keep in mind that we are talking about sort of mid-60s, 70s AD. Right? The church had broken up. Jesus had you know, given up his life, been ascended. And we've had about 30, 40 years of church. And much was happening. Um, and these group of believers um, started to feel the pressure and something began to sneak in. Um, and that was the teaching of Judaism. Keep in mind that these Jewish believers had brought faith and confessed faith in Christ as the King of the Jews. But very quickly, as the pressure came, wanted to start sort of receding, getting back, going back um, and considering the teachings of Judaism, which for them would have changed their lives would have made their lives really easy. They would have simply just slipped back um, and gone back into what they had and what they were known. And it was into this context that this author of Hebrews, some say it was Paul, some say it was Barnabas, it was Barnabas, um, <laughs> wrote a book, and this book was a giant exhortation. This was a giant singular message, and really in a nutshell it goes like this. Jesus is superior. Mm. Keep on going. Mm. And I'm going to help to try and sort of expand on that today, hopefully in under 20 minutes, 25 minutes. <laughs> really, so I'll just cap it like this. Two-point purpose. If you want to know the whole book of Hebrews in a snapshot, it is this. To present a case um, as to the perfection, the superiority of Christ over Judaism, over the Old Covenant, over everything the Jews had thought was the only way. Um, and secondly, to strongly encourage, to back them, to encourage, to, strongly, to stand with them and say, go the distance, mm -hmm. go the distance. Mm -hmm. The title of today's message is simply, follow forward. Mm -hmm. Now sometimes we may fail forward, mm -hmm. but go forward mm -hmm. is what we're really going to go for here. I'm going to read a lot of scriptures and then hopefully I'm going to just allow, or would you allow, these scriptures just to wash over you. You know, the, 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 the Holy Spirit cleanses us with God's word. He cleanses us with God's words. So I'm going to do my best to speak as many scriptures over us today about this exhortation to move, go forward. Okay, 
listen to this, and um, please just listen, um, and if you want notes and verses, I can give them to you. Hebrews 1 to, uh, verses 1 to 4, Hebrews 1, 1 to 4. Long ago, you can even close your eyes, listen to this, long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. Jesus is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purifications for sin, Jesus sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Just to give you some context, this, this, this author just immediately jumps into Jesus and what makes him who he was. And he simply says he is the radiance of God's glory, speaking of Jesus in his humanity. And the author goes on to, and I'm just giving you a basis from which we'll exhort, just giving, you know, he goes on to really argue through the book of Hebrews over and over again. Jesus is not just superior, he was superior as a minister of the new covenant. He was superior over the Aaronic priesthood. He was superior over the old covenant. He was superior over the Old Testament writings. He was superior over the priestly orders. He was the highest of the highest. Keep in mind that the jury sacrificial system, you know, there was, there was a whole priestly order. And the, book of, the writer goes on to say the order in which Jesus came from, the order of Melchizedek, is the superior order. Melchizedek is a very mysterious, very mysterious figure. Um, but we see him, he too has no beginning um, of days or end of days. It's mysterious and there's just too much to go into that there and now. But really what I would like you to see is that the author spent a lot of time in the whole book of Hebrews arguing that Jesus was supreme. Not just over <clears throat> humanity, the created order, death, everything. And it's from this basis that he thought, this is what you need to know to get through what is going on and what is to come. Mm -hmm. So that got me thinking, if that was the there and then, um, what about the here and now mm -hmm. and us? So we are not 1,950 years ago in existence. Here we are. Um, here we are. Lives and all. Warts and all. Blessings and all. But, but here we are. But what faces us? You know, what, 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 what gauges us? What do we face privately or collectively as a team, as a worship team, as a home? You know, just in our personal lives, emotionally, physically. What traumas? Um, what, what faces us today mm -hmm. where we need to stop and recognize the superiority of Jesus mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. everything? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we sang that song this morning, you know, give me a word in my lamp, keep me burning. Mm -hmm. Until what? The break of day. The returning of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, so I thought, well, what does that look like? Um, and I guess I'm asking you the question, what does that look like to you and for you? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, what is it that is, can potentially put a spoke or a trip into your walk with Jesus that could possibly send you in the wrong direction? Mm -hmm. Sort of just inching back, making those small compromises. You know, I, I want you to be honest about this because the Bible's honest about mm -hmm. this. We need to talk about sin. Mm -hmm. We have to talk mm -hmm. about sin. We cannot not talk about Jesus and what he did for our sin. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm just thinking about the things that we encounter and the things that really set us back. Back in that time, that church, their sin was erroneous doctrine. Mm -hmm. And of course, with erroneous doctrine comes erroneous practice. Mm -hmm. What we believe is how we act and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. You know, but I just wrote a simple point, you know, I wonder, where are we with our, the things that trip us up? Mm -hmm. You know, every one of us can put up our hands here and say, we are sinful. Mm -hmm. That is why mm -hmm. Jesus is such good news. Mm -hmm. You don't know that Jesus is good news until you've found out that there's actually bad news <laughs> that goes before it. You know, 
I would, here's a little quote from a, a scholar I really enjoy. His name is R.C. Sproul. And he writes simply, The flesh is not annihilated at conversion. Mm. The war goes on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like that. But then I said, well, so does God's grace and mercy. Mm -hmm. So does God's grace and mercy. Yes. Friends, we are going to sin. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to say, just talk to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Talk to me. But here's another quote to encourage us from T. Keller, Timothy Keller. For every one look at your sins, take five looks at your Savior. Mm -hmm. I just thought, man, mm -hmm. that just hits the spot. Mm -hmm. you know, because if we can get convinced, um, there's a new way of thinking here. Mm -hmm. There's a new thing. You know, if we take our eyes off Jesus, yeah, we're going to be in trouble. Yes. Because sin will get us. It will mm -hmm. consume us. It's the very thing mm -hmm. that Jesus has saved us from. Mm -hmm. And I'd like everyone to know today that as we submit and surrender to the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, as we are carried by God's grace, we step into a rhythm mm -hmm. and an anointing that will lead us out of sin, not mm -hmm. by our own strength. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is great. You know, I'm just hoping that in these moments you've maybe identified and possibly you still need to. Mm -hmm. What is it in my life um, that could possibly lead me into a place of compromise? Mm -hmm. Because God's call to you in Jesus mm -hmm. is a call to endure. Mm. To the end of this journey, we call mm. life. To the end of this journey, we call your Christian faith. Mm. You know, and we've got to be so cautious because I tell you, that fiery dart can come out of mm. nowhere. And mm. if it hits you, it can set you back years. Mm. I tell you a truth, a real truth. We had come, come back from a holiday once and we had gone down to a meeting in West Kent. Not West Kent, um, where was the office in Hammersmith? Barons. Barons Court. Oh, yeah. You know, the, 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 the the narrow one, the Tiny. steep one. Yeah. We were downstairs in the basement and we had been away. I, th I, th I think it, yeah, it was many years ago. And I can tell you, I've actually experienced this arrow. Mm -hmm. I was worshipping there and, you know, mm -hmm. just this, I even felt a sensation of something almost like hit me. Mm -hmm. And my first thought was this. This is crazy. Like, look at these sad people. Mm -hmm. I really thought that. I thought, look at these people. Like, this is just, this is just me mad. Like, what's going on here? Like, everyone's like a bit, like, weird. <laughs> and and I, I didn't see it back then, but genuinely, when I look back now, that was an arrow yeah. that landed. Yeah. And it poisoned me. You know, I, I looked at people around me and I thought, no, man, this is, this is, this is, this is nuts. You're all nuts. <laughs> uh, I'm fine. <laughs> You're all weird. And you know what, it poisoned my relationship with others, but fundamentally it poisoned my relationship with the Lord. And so these things we have got to be so careful about. So here's the thing, I hope you've maybe identified something, what is it for me? But that's one thing to say the what, but what about the how? How do we, how do we go forward? Um, and I have a few thoughts, and I'd like to let Scripture speak to you on this. We recall... Listen to this. The Holy Spirit teaches us in Hebrews 10.32 to recall the former days when after you were enlightened. The writer mm -hmm. says to them, guys, remember. Remember the beginning. Mm -hmm. Ephesus, the church, the, the, you know, the writings to Ephesus, Revelation. Remember your first love. Mm -hmm. Remember, recall. Greg touched on it the last time we spoke about the power of just remembering mm -hmm. the things where God has taken us from and what was going on. Mm -hmm. Another thing we do is we hold. The Bible says in Hebrews 10.23, let us hold fast our confession of hope without wavering. Why? Because he who promised is faithful. Another one, Hebrews 3.14 3, says, we have come to share in Christ if indeed we hold our original confidence to the end. You see the picture? Hold your confession. Hold your confidence. Again, verse 18, let us hold our confession. In fact, here's the full scripture. Since then, we have a great high priest. You see the, the, the backing, the superiority, and he's saying, right, because of this, since we have our great high priest who passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. And later he goes on to say, to hold fast to the hope set before us. Mm -hmm. So, we recall, we hold. There comes another one. We draw near. 
Hebrews 10.22, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled um, from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us then, with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace. Why? That we may receive help and mercy in time of need. We draw near. We imitate. 6.12 Paul, uh, the writer says, be imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. I'll say it again. Be imitators mm -hmm. of those who through faith and patience inherit. Copy people mm -hmm. who are strong and on the road. Mm -hmm. Copy them. Because yes. that's what the Bible teaches. It's that simple. All right. So there are a couple of things there. We imitate, we draw near, we hold fast, we recall. These are things, practical things that each one of us can do. If you don't know how to pray, or it's like, Lord, I'm stuck for praying, draw near, Amen. recall, mm -hmm. yeah. hold fast, yeah. and pray it through. Okay, so let me just land this thing as best as I can. What's my time? Am I right? You're good. You're fine. Good? Okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's the light right here, and again, let the scriptures wash over you. We share in a heavenly calling, and are taught by the Spirit of God to do what? To consider Jesus the Apostle and High Priest of our confession. Mm. Jesus was faithful to Him who appointed Him. And it is Christ Jesus, folks, that will appear a second time. And the Bible says, yet not to bear sin but to bring salvation to those of us who are eagerly waiting. Mm. We must follow him forward. Mm. We have to stay the path. Mm. Yeah. No matter how sickening the sin or how great the fall, he's a high priest. He is superior and he will hold us fast. Mm. But we draw near and we recall and we too hold. Um, I'd like to encourage you, let us as a team yeah, in every nation, Cardiff, back in Slough, back in, where, someone else, someone else, Somerset, stop. Birmingham, yeah. Birmingham, all over, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Birmingham, Potosin, um, let us, let us persevere, let us persevere, because friends, the truth is, you will be tested, yeah. your faith will be tested, the world is out there, you know this, you will be tested, yeah. and you just cannot quietly tap out, you must the Bible says, persevere. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I've touched lightly on really what the author was getting at for these particular group of people. They were in grave danger. They were in grave danger. Mm. They were actually in real danger. And I'm talking about the stuff, you know, like, one saved, always saved, or not? You know, and I'm not answering that question. I'm just saying the author was speaking very soberly. Mm. Did he not say it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of yeah. the living God? Mm. You know, these are some of the strong warnings he gave them. But I don't think that's for us here and now. <laughs> I do think, though, that each one of us needs to be really mindful mm -hmm. that we are called by Christ to keep on moving forward. Mm. Yes. Now, sometimes you fail forward. Mm. Yes. And it's so important to get that concept. You know, because you will. We will. Mm. Yeah. I will. I will fail. Mm. And I will fail and I will fail. But that's not where the story ends. Yeah. You know, and Jesus is faithful. He was faithful to the one who appointed him. And he will be faithful to his call in your life. Mm -hmm. To see the journey through until the end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let us persevere not just in holding on, but towards maturity in our faith. Mm -hmm. here's, a, here's the truth. It's our responsibility to make the time to grow in our maturity with mm -hmm. Jesus. It's our responsibility. He doesn't call us to make the growing happen. He calls us to come. Mm. You know, and that, that's a big deal. Mm. Let me say something to you. The Lord Jesus is able to save to the uttermost, mm. to the uttermost, those who draw near to God through Him. Mm. I'll say it again. The Lord Jesus is able to save to the uttermost, those who draw near to God through Him. Mm. That is a scripture for people out there. Mm. There is a scripture for you in here. Mm -hmm. He is able to save to the uttermost. Mm -hmm. All right. We are there. One last little page and I'm done. Okay. So, 
We say then, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, and hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Folks, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Mm -hmm. Let us then lay aside every weight and sin which so clings so closely, and let us run with endurance yeah. the race set before us. Amen. We are exhorted by Scripture towards holy living, and warned against persistence in sin. We are warned against persistence in sin. Lord Jesus calls us to faithfully follow him forward. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't look tidy. This doesn't look smooth. I remember attending a lecture in 2005, and the lecture was called Messy Spirituality. And that's what it is. Yeah. Most of the times, it's just like a, it's just like a mess. And in the middle of it, sometimes you feel like you can see some stuff. <laughs> You know, but we fail forward, we move forward, we go forward. Um, but we are carried by the promise of Jesus, Amen. that He is faithful. Amen. Hear His words to you, I am faithful to you, yeah. and I will bring you home. Yeah. You know, um, we must press on towards the promised salvation rest. You know, there is a Sabbath for God's people. The book of Hebrews is full of this. There is a Sabbath for God's people, a promised rest and a promised reward god doesn't call you to be faithful and to endure and to go through hardships and then you pitch up and there's no reward for it i'm telling you the bible teaches us he will reward us yes. for our faithful yes. endurance Amen. he will reward you and he will grant you rest Amen. this is called the sabbath of god's people Amen. the sabbath of god's people and the writer of hebrews tried hard to remind the jews believers who were slipping back into Judaism. He said, did it, did, was it not clear that those who disobeyed God fell in the deserts? They fell in the deserts. Generation of Jews fell in the desert because of their disobedience, their hardness of hearts. So, what do we need the most? And I'll pray for us now. One thing I've learned is that I always ask the Lord for the spirit of endurance. Because really sometimes... <laughs> Most all times, you correct that, you just need God to carry you. Mm -hmm. You just need the Lord's mercy and grace mm -hmm. to cover you, to bestow on you mm -hmm. a spirit that keeps you for another lap. Yeah. Maybe Amen. not another five laps, mm -hmm. but just another lap mm -hmm. for now. And tomorrow, we run another lap. Yeah. Not another five, tomorrow's lap. Mm -hmm. You know, so let me leave that with you. And I hope some of these scriptures have just washed over you um, and been reminded that you have been reminded that Jesus was superior not just over the old covenant not just as the one who ushered in the new covenant over the Aaronic priesthood over Moses remember for the Jewish people hearing this can you imagine what the writer is saying he said you Moses no Aaron no the old covenant no can you imagine the shock you know, uh, this is what the people who chose to believe in Christ confessed. Mm -hmm. That he is the high minister, he yeah. is the high priest. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they paid dearly. So, let's not forget, there is a price to pay. Yeah. But there is a reward and there is a blessing to stay on the road. Mm -hmm. Let me pray for us and we are wrapped up. Amen. <clears throat> Do you know the gospel says that you are more sinful and flawed than you ever dared to be but more accepted and loved that you ever dare hope. I just want to say thank you, Heavenly Father, for each one of us. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you. We are taught that you are the divine radiance of God Almighty. Thank you, Lord, that you are our High Priest, the one who has entered the very living Holy of Holies. Lord, you are the one who has justified, yeah. who has declared each one of us righteous and worthy. Mm -hmm. You have declared each one of us, Lord, a child of the living God. Yeah. Yes. Lord, you have given us your word, your mm -hmm. promise, yes. not, just of or not just of rest, but your faithfulness to us to bring us home. Mm -hmm. Lord, you have told us that in this world we will have tribulation, but to be of good cheer. Lord, for you will carry us. And I pray for each person in this room. 
I ask you, Spirit of the living God, would you pour out your endurance, your spirit yes. of endurance, yes. on each one of us. Yes. Lord, that no, no matter where it is or what it yes. is, when it comes, Lord, would we keep our eyes fixed on you. Yes. Jesus, the author, perfecter, finisher of our faith. Yes. Lord, one day we will know just how much, just how much, what a privilege it is to be here today, in a land at peace. Yes. Mm -hmm. Lord, in a place as friends and family in Christ, <coughs> in a community joined. Mm -hmm. Lord, thank you for this blessedness that you've put on us, given yes. to us. Thank you, Lord God, for the high calling for each one of us. Yes. And my prayer today, Lord, is that each one of us would fulfill mm -hmm. the calling mm -hmm. on the lives that are represented in this room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lord, may we be found faithful in you. Not today, but for the whole journey. And Lord, when we fail you, and when we fall, may we fail and fall, fall forward in you. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord, that you are more willing to forgive than we are willing to confess. Lord, I just pray your blessing over each one of us. Thank you for the book of Hebrews. Lord, that teaches us, that admonishes us to go forward. Thank you for this time. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I told them I'm not going to stop them. The kids are going to stop them. <laughs> um, guys, awesome. That's it. Thank you so much for coming all the way from Slough. Love it. Um, we're going to just hang out. There's food. There's cake. Um, but if you need prayer for anything, please, we'd love to. You know, just tell someone. Um, and, and we'd love to do that. God is at work today. You know, this is obviously we're having fun, but there's more to it than that. So just feel that freedom and that liberty, and let's minister to one another. Um, but Father, thank you for your presence with us today, and your blessing. I just speak your blessing over each of us, God. Thank you that you provide for us this week, to protect us this week, God. Uh, and that you lead us in your purposes. Yes, Lord. Thank you that by your grace we can follow you forward. Yes, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.